Stuart's here. Uh, Stuart. Hello. All right. Hey, Stuart. Hey, By uh, the way, that, that image you just posted on Instagram, the one on your background there, that is yeah. gorgeous. Yeah, I'm actually going to go through the whole thing of how to create that tonight. So oh, very, very people cool. should be able to go away and just create that image at home quite easily. It's quite easy, to be fair. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. No, very cool. So what did I miss? What did I miss in my macro talk? Since you kind of do this for a living. Uh... <laughs> well, I'm not I'm not the type of person to point out stuff, um, but you did have the RF 35 millimeter on the list as one to one, but it's not. It's actually a, uh, a two to one lens. It's a Which one? Lens. The RF 35 millimeter. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Because I've actually got one. <laughs> Take your <it> name. <now. laughs> Yeah, so that, um, that might be actually but, wrong because I stole that information right off our website. Oops. So, oh, we better, uh -oh, better double check your busted. website there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, busted. Mm -hmm. but no, great presentation. <laughs> I enjoyed it. Uh, you know, it. It's great just to get people into macro photography because that's one of the hardest things I find because a lot of people have this um, this idea that you have to start with the macro lens and you don't. You can just buy the extension tubes and away you go, you know. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I started my uh, macro journey with a 15 pound set of extension tubes, you know, so you can get started on uh, any gear. And then, yeah. like I say to everyone who asks, um, if you like yeah, the macro that you're doing, then you start going towards, you know, the high end gear yeah. and then look with the Holy Grail, which is the, uh, the Canon MPE 65mm lens, which I love that lens. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. How but, long um, have you been 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 doing um, your macro work? Specifically, macro for uh, since two thousand sixteen. Okay. So uh, I, I took a really um, not so good picture of a jumping spider, <laughs> and um, <laughs> quickly realised it wasn't very good. So then I start, started pursuing, you know, getting you know, the lighting right, the uh, the magnification, and everything down, nailing it down to get the shot that I want. And you know, I'm getting yeah. there now. And, yeah, um, you think? Pa pandemic has stopped me a little bit because I did actually want to be doing uh, wild jumpers this year, but with the pandemic, it's hard to get out and uh, do wild jumpers because I've got kids and yeah. uh, you can't get babysitters. But, you know, we will manage to uh, <laughs> right. get on with it. <laughs> yeah. Gorgeous. Yeah, no, I, I was looking over your Instagram and you have some fantastic images. I mean, really just staggering. I hope you don't mind me using Lawa uh, uh, sent me the, a couple of those images. No, 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 that's fine. The, that's fine. That's fine. With the with the four on top and four below uh, water droplets in that yes. red. That's just gorgeous. Yeah. Really was stunning. Yeah. So I and, really uh, appreciate you'd be what you do. you'd be surprised just how easy that is act to do. You can do it on your tabletop right next to you right now. It's that easy to ah. do. It really is. And uh, like I said, um, yeah, I'll be going through that uh, tonight as well. Very good. Yeah, I would think actually the pandemic might help you because it'll force you to look at your inside world with more, uh, <laughs> like, hmm, it, what's small and interesting that I can turn Yeah, into yeah it, 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 it did in that aspect that, you know, um, you started looking around the house and what to do and all that. Um, but I do enjoy going out there and just finding all kinds of things to photograph because it's not just insects you know you got the you know the water drops obviously you got that but there's also um abstract patterns you can get like uh, flaking paint and stuff like that yeah. it's amazing what you can actually see when you go into one-to-one -one or greater it really is and the um the other thing as well is um for people that don't like going out you know you can do it in your back garden as well or your front garden yeah. i mean some of the right. pictures i've taken are just literally in the front garden you know it, it's great it really is i don't know what you feed these spiders to keep them in one place <laughs> for you to get some of these shots but uh you know it is it's pretty impressive yeah. a lot of them are actually pet spiders um oh, yeah? you, you, you can add. actually you, you'd be surprised um you know what people can keep as pets uh so what i did is uh, you know I, I wanted to photograph jumping spiders uh, but there wasn't too much information about online about how to do it and trying to chase a wild jumping spider in your back garden while trying out a new lighting technique is very hard so what i found out is you can actually keep jumping spiders as pets mm. so i went and got a couple of jumping spiders and i used those as like models to try out different lighting techniques and different methods different backgrounds and that and then i went from there onto wild jumping spiders which is it's a huh. challenge but yeah. uh, it's it is fun when you get that shot that you're really going after. We have a comment from Jay. 
He says, so nice to see you here. You're such an inspiration. I love your YouTube channel. Love the jumpers. Thank you. <laughs> Much appreciated. I love them too. They're so cute. <laughs> Oh yeah, they, um, they're QQ. And it, it is a fun fact that not a lot of people know unless you subscribe to the channel, but when I started macro photography, I actually suffered from arachnophobia. Oh. And um, having jumping spiders actually cured me of arachnophobia. So now I can go out and uh, pick up any spider that I want to, within reason, of course. <laughs> sure, yeah. <laughs> the, the certain, certain that one, but yeah. luckily I, I live in a part of the world where none of the spiders, the wild ones, are actually uh, dangerous to you. Yeah, and, uh, no I black made a, widows I, or funnel webs. Huh? Yeah, I made a joke about if I was in Australia and you see like a, a funnel web or something, I'd be like going towards it instead of away from it, you know, it'd be quite funny. <laughs> uh, <laughs> might get a good portrait before it gets evil, but yeah. Well, there is that, there is that, yeah. Yeah, nice, so uh, nice. Media says, love Stuart jumping spider youtubes can't find any local jumping spiders we have monster spiders in florida <laughs> <laughs> yeah um well the the, the jumping spiders I actually have as pets they actually come from florida as well so oh. i mean i don't know what time of year they're out but uh, they are actually wild in florida so he's actually very lucky because he doesn't have to keep them as pets you get to go out in the right time of the year and you'll be able to photograph the spiders that i photograph without having to uh keep them and feed them flies and all that stuff you know yeah well if you do have monster spiders i suggest getting the lawa wide angle macro so that <laughs> you can get them all in frame <laughs> yeah yeah definitely uh, i tried photographing my tarantula once and uh, that was an absolute nightmare because like, he doesn't want to be disturbed do you know what i mean so he was flicking yeah. hairs all over the place and i'm like that's it now that, that's it i'm not going no further <laughs> they said yeah. they spiders bigger than your lens <laughs> the other uh, another hard thing um when it comes to the jumpy spiders as well because they're, they're not actually that scared of you and when you're getting in closer than one to one so you go like uh, two to one like with the lower lens they are actually jump onto the front of your lens yeah. so you, you're looking for your viewfinder and you see the front legs come up like that and you know that's it they're going to jump and then bang they're gone and you know they're on your equipment somewhere, but you don't know where, so you have to put yeah. your camera down slow. And you're, you know, you, you're like this, you're like, where are you? Where are you? Um, yeah, <laughs> trying to find out where this little jumpy spider's gone. Nice. Yeah. <clears throat> but uh, they are, I mean, if anyone wants to get really serious about macro, the jumpy spiders are really great to practice on because, um, you know, they're small, they're, they're moving around a lot, so you, you're not, yeah, you know, they're not like water drops, just sit still. So they're moving around, but they're also because of their front eyes, you've really got to nail your lighting and your diffusion to make them look good. And what I found is once you've done that on jumping spiders, it'll work on almost every subject. Then you know, ladybirds and all those, it'll work on all those because you don't get that harsh reflection off any shells and stuff like that. So That's they are, a really, they good are really good to practice on. Yeah. And they're beautiful, man. They're yeah. just really, really gorgeous to look at. Anders is uh, asking, uh, how come you will talk about water drops and not about jumpers? That's what I was hired to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got six more minutes. We can talk about jumpers until you get sick of talking about it. But uh, <clears throat> better ask a question now. Yeah, if you want to talk about jumpers, we got, what is it, uh, five minutes or so? Yeah. And we Jason, thank you for teaching me patience when it comes to macro photography. Oh, yeah. Patience is the number one thing you got to do patience yeah. um i've just done a shot of a water drop with um, the lower logo in it i've just put it on instagram and um you know he's talking about vibration and that when it comes to macro and you know i've got my, my camera on the tripod and the uh, the dandelion seed is it's going like this and all it was was the heat coming off the radiator and it's coming up and as you know heat rises it's making it go like this so i had to crank up my f-stop uh, sorry by a shutter speed all the way up to, to manage to get it and it's patience it, it, that is the main thing patience and practice is the main thing when it comes to macro photography and then yeah once you've <clears throat> once you've done that and you start going down a certain alleyway you know flowers insects and that, then you start nailing on what uh, what's your next upgrade that you want to go do you want to go yeah. uh, a two to one lens do you want to go manual do you want to go automatic it's uh, there's a lot of equipment out there you can start hoarding i can tell you that have you used the uh, the the twenty four millimeter probe before? Yes, I've actually got it here somewhere. You've got it over there, yeah. Yeah, I put out a, a review with it on my YouTube channel last week. 
And oh, cool. uh, I got to send it back now, unfortunately. Oh, no, boo. <laughs> yeah, got yeah unfortunately. Yeah. I, I thought about trying that, but they know me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But that is, it is a great lens. Um, a perfect example on my review video I did, I put the probe lens into a spider's rebbing, and the spider's rebbing is only like that big. So literally, you can't get you can't get that into the rebbing without breaking the spider's home. Sure. So yeah, I'll put the probe lens in there, and I can get it all the way down and up to the spider, and without disturbing it. And it was it's fantastic. It's one of those lenses. Um, it's like a niche area, so you're never going to use it all the time. But if you right. don't take it with you, you're guaranteed to run across a situation where you need it. Do you know what I mean? It's just one of them yeah. lenses. Same with the uh, the 15 millimeter wide angle lens as well. That one's a quite hard one to use, but the results you get is fantastic with that because you're just yeah. you're showing the subject and the environment, which is uh, great. Yeah, like I said, that, that that's the things <clears throat> that I've been very impressed with Lawa in general. The engineering have, have really expanded the creativity uh, for this market, I think, and and really get like you said the niche lenses that they yeah. are, um, but wow you know i mean how else could you get that shot you know that's, that's it's just mind-boggling no. yeah. but i mean even their standard lenses though the um i mean yeah i'll go through a lot of lenses i do a lot of reviews and the lower 100 millimeter is the sharpest macro lens i've tested to date really? you know and uh, in fact i mean i've got my canon lens here yeah and i'll, I'll just literally use that as a paperweight now <laughs> Just don't pop from <laughs> and um yeah you know, before i do get in do get into my talk i can tell the people who are watching that the lower lens is actually mine i went out and bought it after i did the review because i was that impressed with it i was like that's giving me my kit bag you know and i went nice. out. yeah yeah there you go great and they're pretty fantastic the engineers know what they are doing and, and i'm glad yeah, the they optics do. the optics inside the uh, the lenses are uh, just fantastic you know i mean there's no distortion no chromatic aberration and like I said, very sharp as well. And the yeah. price as well. I mean, yeah, if I can talk about Not the price, bad for it's, it's half get. the price yeah, of the, uh, the Canon lens, you know. Yeah. So um, Canon really got to step up their game if they want to compete in the macro market. Yeah. Well, so they took the market by storm, though. It was, they it, did. I mean, all of a sudden, it's like, here's this name you've never heard of. And the first one I saw was the Probe, which, of course, stands out because of just how unique it looks and, and its capability. Um, and we've just seen non-stop goodness coming from from lao in general so yeah i'm happy happy they're yeah. aboard this year very good well i think uh unless someone has another question that's about all the, the banter i got for you leslie how are we okay, looking there good. looking good all oh. right well now i'm gonna go ahead and shut my audio and my video off and i'm gonna turn this over to you Stuart. thank you again for joining us we'll talk to you in a little bit hopefully my computer will pl not play up tonight <laughs> The first of all, I want to ex uh, just um, excuse the headphones because my uh, my normal microphone went and died on me, so it's pretty much useless uh, now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, you sound good now. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so, for anyone who doesn't know who I am, my name is Stuart Wood. I am a macro photographer and YouTube content creator. I would like to thank uh, B&H for having me here and, of course, Laura for allowing me the opportunity to do this presentation. So, what I want to do first is I need to share my screen. Bit of a sour pitch, but I want to um, just bring up the fact that. Uh, can you all see my screen okay? Yep, all good. Looks, yep. looks good. Excellent. Okay. I just want to bring up the fact that um, this uh, 25 millimeter uh, 2.5 to 5 times macro lens is on a deal today. Uh, that is an absolutely fantastic price for that lens. In fact, it's cheaper for me to buy it from B&H and have it shipped into the UK than it is to buy it from the UK. So there you go. And in fact, I might be adding that to the cart later on if I can uh, get away with it. And um, the lens that I use on a lot of my macro photography is this particular one here. This is the Venus Optics Lower 100mm f2.8, two times ultra macro lens. And it is fantastic. So if we can drop the links for those in for me, it'd be much appreciated. And uh, I'm going to get on with my presentation because I've only got half an hour. <laughs> okay, so again, my name's Stuart Wood. That's where you can find me. All my social links are on my website at stuartwood.com. And um, we are here to talk about shooting water droplets with two to one magnification with lower. So 
here's one of my uh, hero shots for tonight. This is shot on the Canon EOS R with the lower EF 100mm f2.8 Dreamer macro two times lens. Again, fantastic lens, really, really sharp. And I've put the settings in there. Normally I don't share my settings, um, but when it comes to water drops, your settings are all over the place. Like I was speaking before, you know, if you've got any type of movement in the air, you're going to have to crank up that shutter speed. If you haven't, you can bring it down. But this one was shot at 150 for a second at f2.8 ISO 100. Here's another example. It's exactly the same water drop, just a different background. Backgrounds are so important when it comes to uh, macro photography, any type. Okay, I've, I'm always talking about backgrounds, backgrounds, backgrounds. And I'll be covering that in a little bit, in a bit. Okay, so my current setup for water droplet macro photography, and that is of uh, today's day, because obviously this is continuously changing. But I'm currently using the Canon EOS R with the lower 100 millimeter macro lens. And you can see a little bit of behind the scenes setup there of a uh, simple water drop setup. And my hope out of this half an hour is that you are going to be able to go away and capture the same type of images that I am showing you in this presentation. It is, um, believe me, it's, it's, it's quite easy to do once you figure out everything. So the macro setup, things that I typically use in my water drop clip photography. Again, kind of CSR. I have a battery grip that I use sometimes because I like to go to portrait mode. And if I am going handheld, I like to have that battery grip there for extra grip, just personal choice. I usually use the lower 100 millimeter f2.8 macro lens again. I have a budget tripod from Amazon, <laughs> we'll skip over that. I've got a Lexar uh, SD card. And the reason I, I'm, I'm talking about that now is when you get into macro, you, you, you are eventually gonna end up going into focus stacking. And if you are like me, I do handheld focus stacking. I can take a lot of images, uh, put them into the buffer, and I need that buffer to clear quickly. So that's why I thought I would mention that. So if you start buying you know, the decent cards in there, you're not gonna have to repurchase it later on when you really get into the focus stacking. But I'm not gonna talk about focus stacking in this presentation because it's a whole other ball game. So typically I will take with me uh, a spray bottle. It's just a little spray bottle, a syringe, and a specimen holder. All right, so, when it comes to water droplet macro photography, easy subject to uh, use are flowers. So if you just go out to your local supermarket, you can grab yourself a bunch of uh, flowers. Any type of flower just works great. Flowers are awesome for this type of photography. And the other thing I use a lot of are dandelion seeds. And now what I found this year was the sulfur size seeds, which are basically giant dandelion seeds. They are absolutely awesome for doing water drop macro photography. So specimen holders, these are what I use to hold my, um, my seeds. I hold my background with these specimen holders. And they used to be expensive, but now they're actually quite uh, cheap. I have a, a video on YouTube about that. I'll talk about that in a minute. But on the end of my specimen holders, I put on some heat shrink tubing, okay? And what this does is it goes over your alligator clip that you use to hold your specimens. But without that, you're gonna be breaking the stems of your flowers. So what I like to do is put that on and that helps to protect the stems of the flowers and doesn't cut through my stem, which is very, very irritating. This one here is a homemade specimen holder. I made this for one pound 13. Um, again, there is a video on my YouTube channel on exactly how to make this. So if you are interested in these specimen holders, check out my YouTube channel. So this is uh, the major tools of the trade. We have a spray bottle on the left and a syringe on the right. And you can get blunt syringes off Amazon. So if you check out Amazon, type in syringes, you can get blunt syringes off Amazon, which is very useful for this type of work. And again, macro background cards, they are important. These are my own textures from my website, but you can use anything in the background. I've even used carrier bags in the background. So talking about backgrounds, they are very, very important. And I've said it before, and I will continue saying it. They are so important when it comes to macro photography. So here's a shot of a water drop on a flower with an absolute horrible background. 
put in a different background and you get a whole new type of image. So again, there's the, um, the ugly background and a blue background. So I do encourage you to go out and play with the backgrounds if you are going to try this type of photography. F-stops are also important when you're doing the water drop macro photography. On the left, we have a water drop that's taking at f-stop 2.8, and on the right, we have f-10. If you notice, you have got more detail in the f-10 image. However, you've also got the background that's starting to come into focus. And for me, personally, it's like Marmite, you either love it or you hate it. I prefer the dreamy look of a lower f-stop. But the lower f-stop doesn't always mean always shoot at 2.8. It all depends on the size of your background. If you've got a larger background, you'll be able to get away with a higher f-stop because your background is larger, you can push it further away. And the, the dreamy look is basically, you're getting just the edges of the water drop in focus and the rest of it is out of focus. And again, you can focus stack if you want the whole lot in focus, but for this talk, I'm simply keeping two single shots. So lighting, the all important lighting. Okay, what do I use to light my water drops? Basically, I have three different lights. I either have the ambient light that's in the room. I have my studio light, which generally is being used to record behind the scenes rather than actually lighting the water drop, but it does work quite well. And my main light that I use is a simple torch from Amazon. That is it. Okay, you can also use sunlight if you wanted to. Believe me, you really don't need a, a massive uh, studio light or anything like that you can do this on your tabletop at home so let's take a look at this shot in particular now i did show it before and the reason it's coming up again is i want to show you from start to finish exactly how i got this shot so i'm hoping that after this next couple of minutes you're going to be able to go out and get this particular shot now these are all at two times macro using the lower lens and just to on a side note, if you're on a crop sensor camera, that lens also goes to, will, will turn into a 3.2 times macro lens because of the crop factor. But anyway, moving on. So here we go. This is something new for me. So I'm going to put down a specimen holder. <clears throat> I'm simply going to pick out a single dandelion seed and place that into my specimen holder. Once I've done that, Put the lid on your case because sometimes uh, I forget and if you sneeze, oh, you're in trouble. <laughs> so I'm going to position it now. I've got my lens set to two to one. I'm just going to quickly position the, uh, the dandelion seed in the middle of the frame. So now we're going to place the water drops on there. And you don't have to be gentle, as you can see. But what I do is I place um, a little drop and then add more drops to it to build up the drop to the size that I actually want. And what you're trying to do is to get a nice round drop, but don't put too much on because if you do, it's going to fall off then. It will fall off quite often. If it does, just, uh, just carry on and put a new one on. So now we're going to come with the background. It's just a very simple textured background card. If you notice around the edge of the, uh, the background card, you can see the studio wall. And what's important is you need to have the background close enough so that there's no um, seepage of the studio. So you see that I've moved it forward to get rid of that uh, white around the, um, around the drop. So now I'm gonna set my timer to 10 seconds. For that, it's because I've got floorboards and it's very shaky, as you can see from the footage. So I'm gonna set it to 10 seconds. I'm gonna press my shutter, speed, uh, my shutter button. Hold my breath, because believe me, just breathing will shake this uh, setup. And then we are going to take the shot. Okay, and there is the out of camera shot from that specific uh, setup. Very easy, again, you got your, your dandelion seed in a uh, specimen holder, water drop on it, and a background card, that is it. So, here is another footage of behind the scenes. We are um, outputting to my monitor. Okay, we have our camera with our lower lens. We've got my ugly mud there. <laughs> we have our dandelion seed with the water drop on there on our little specimen holder. We have our background card, which in this case is a blue background card. Again, held by a specimen holder. 
And the light I was using is the video light that I was actually using to record behind the scenes. Again, you don't have to have a big light like that. That is there simply to capture that behind the scenes footage. And again, that is the result of that once I've put it through Lightroom and applied some uh, dark and moody presets that I use. Here's another shot again. It's exactly the same drop. All I did was change out the background. And again, that has been edited in Lightroom. So another uh, type of water droplet photography you can do is water drop refraction photography. So this entails you putting something in the background, but then bringing it into focus within the water drop itself. So here's an example of that, again, taken on the Laura EF 100 millimeter F 2.8. And um, again, this is basically the same method, except there's two things that are changing here. One is you are bringing a, a flower into the background rather than a texture card. And the lighting, the lighting, you only want to light the background when you're doing this type of photography. And again, another image here where I have a flower in the background. Everything else is out of focus apart from the self size seed and the background, uh, the, the, refract the refraction in the water drop. So again, I have another behind the scenes video. So let's have a look at exactly how this is built up. So again, we have our little pot full of uh, seeds and I'm gonna pull out the self size seed. And this thing is absolutely huge. I absolutely love these seeds for water drop uh, images. You see the size of that thing? Fantastic, those are. I like to call them a giant dandelion clocks. So here we can see from my EVF now, I'm just positioning the self size seed to the right hand side of my frame, getting a rough uh, um, focus going there. And now I'm going to place a flower in the background. And to make sure I've got the height of the flower correct, I'm just going to preview it now through my EVF to make sure that I've got it in, roughly in the right place. And I like the center of the flower to be in the center of the frame in most of my images because it really turns out quite nice then. So now I've got that set and the height is good, it's time to spray on some uh, seeds. So using a spray bottle, I'm going to spray on some water drops. And you just keep on spraying, even when you think you've got enough drops on your scene just carry on spraying because you can never have too many water drops. You see there, I'm just building up the water drops. Just keep on spraying. So now the water drops are there, we're gonna bring in our background uh, flower. Very simple setup. Check through the EVF to see uh, our, our focus, check our focus. And you can see there that our flower is not quite close enough to our scene to fill the, uh, the water drop. So I'm going to bring the, uh, the seed forward because I want more, I want it closer. Then we're going to bring the flower closer to our water drop so that it fills the drop. Now with my torch, as I said before, cheap Amazon torch, I'm just going to light the background, correct the exposure. <clears throat> so I'm going to bump up that shutter speed. Do final focusing to make sure we've got critical focus. There we go, and I'm zooming in on my camera using the zoom button. Okay. And then we get images like this. So this is uh, um, taken at one eight hundredth of a second. I did this one today, and again, because of my squeaky floorboards, I have to bump up my uh, my shutter speed. Plus, it's the weekend and the kids are off school, so they're all running around downstairs, and the whole house shakes. So you can change the um, the flower. So in this one, I changed the background flower and put on a, a different color background. The kids were running around for this one, so I was able to get around one one hundredth of a second on my shutter speed. So I was able to bump up my f stop a little bit more. And of course. Always play around with the position of your selfie size seed or your um, dandelion seed. So for this one, I'll change it up, put it uh, directly up as it would be in, uh, in the nature, in the wild. I change the background again. And on this one, I'm lighting up just the background to get that result there. So here's another quick behind the scenes video. 
of that particular setup. So I have my camera. I've got my lower lens there, fantastic lens. There's my self size seed with the water drops on and a very simple background card. And literally, that is it. That is literally all there is to it. And of course, I have a flare on standby in case I want to switch that out. And the reason it's on standby is the self size seeds, they close up very quickly when they get wet. So once you've sprayed it, you've really got to get in there and get your shot quickly. So one aspect that I quickly learned about water drop uh, photography is that you really want that perfectly round drop. So on this failed attempt here, you notice how uh, the refraction within the actual flower itself, within the drop, sorry, is it's all distorted. And that is simply because the drop is not round enough. It's, it's elongated, not quite enough water in there. You know, just the drop up the, uh, the right there, that looks a lot better because it's more round. So when you are doing uh, refraction photography, try to get the water drop as close to as round as possible. So here is another one, perfectly round drop. So you can see the difference there between this one and that one, exactly the same flower in the background, except that water drop is not round, this one is. So you can see the difference there that makes it have a nice round water drop. So here, I'm just going to show you a build up of that particular scene. So we have just the petal and I'm lighting it with my torch. You can see how ugly it is when you'd light it directly with the torch. It just doesn't work. So I've softened the light. Decided not to uh, light it up at all. So then we're going to bring in a background card. So we're not seeing any of the studio within the, uh, the refraction on, in the drop. Then I'm going to bring in the flower. And again, we are lighting just the background to get this shot. We're going to bring in our water drop, light in the background, and you can see how the, uh, the, the whole scene just builds up. And then there's our final shot from that particular uh, shoot. So on this one, I was able to do a 1 100th of a second at F8, ISO 400. And the reason it's at F8 is that flare is very big. So I was able to push it further away from my water drop. So therefore I was able to put up my F stop and still get a nice dreamy look to it. So here is behind the scenes. I can hear myself being repeated. Someone got a microphone open. Never mind. So, so I have a, um, a memo clip holder here that's holding the petal with a little water drop on it. There is our nice big flower. And again, we have a background card just to fill in the space in between the petals. We really don't want to see the studio um, out there. And again, we have a nice behind the scenes uh, video here of that particular setup. There's my lower lens, the petal, water drop, and the flower. So in this video here, you can see here how I'm playing around with my torch to see what type of effect I'm getting. And I do encourage you to play around with the lighting. You can also move it forward and backwards to adjust the exposure. So if I want a higher shutter speed, I'll bring my torch closer to the background flower to get a higher shutter speed. And you can see how the reflections um, play around when you're moving the torch around the angles, the shadows, and you just move your torch around until you get to a position that you like. And of course, if you haven't got access to a dandelion seed or a self size seed, you can just use flowers. So here is a single water drop on a flower. And uh, we're going to show you behind the scenes again on how to set up that particular shot. It is very easy. So I'm going to place my flower onto a specimen holder. And then I'm just going to adjust my camera to the same height as the flower, then look for my EVF and just start rotating the flower to find something that's standing out, something that I can see on the composition that I like. You can see I'm just moving it around, trying to find something that I like. So at some point, I will find uh, something I like. And in this particular shot, it's this petal right at the front here. And I'm thinking to myself, what's it going to look like with water drop on? So we are going to place a water drop on there. 
And again, we don't put the whole drop on at once. We just put, we build it up a little bit at a time. I'm going to zoom in, make sure I have critical focus on the drop. And usually I have my focus on the outside of the drop. As you can see there, we have critical focus now. And again, this is being lit by the studio light because I'm doing the behind the scenes. And what I'm seeing here is down the bottom left-hand corner, we have a little bit of a gap. So I'm just going to bring in another flower from the same bouquet of flowers. We're going to drop that down the bottom right-hand corner just to cover up that. So it's a bit of distracting. So that's going to cover that up. And again, just double checking the focus. And then we're ready to take our shot. And that is our shot once it's been edited in Lightroom. And again, very easy. Okay. Um, any questions, right, we'll, I'll answer them at the end. But again, it is very, very easy to do. You can also use your mobile phone if you wish to as well. Now, here is a behind the scenes shot that I have uh, done. And what we have here, we have uh, my camera. Again, I'm using the Lauer 100 millimeter two point, uh, sorry, <laughs> two times macro lens. Have I told you that's my favorite lens? <laughs> okay. And we have a memo clip holder with just a piece of grass on it. And on there, I've placed four water drops. We have a flower in the background being held by a memo clip holder again. And underneath there, I just have a mobile phone. Okay. Now, the lighting again, I'm lighting the background flower again. It always seems to work best if you light the background flower and not the actual drop. And I've just created a makeshift flag basically out of my uh, background cards, just so that this flash doesn't hit any of the water drops. And that is the resulting image from that particular shot. So again, like I said on the, when we were talking about this one previously, that is actually done just on a table. So you don't need any specialist equipment for this type of thing. And of course, if you want to get really simple, you can just go out after it has rained and just photograph natural rain drops. This is something I've only just started doing because previously to this year, I had an entry level camera that didn't like getting wet. So um, I tend generally stayed away when it was raining. And of course, once you've done all this, once you've learned um, you know, how to control your, um, your exposure with the exposure triangle, what f-stops to use, the lighting, once you've done all that, you can create an image like this so that you can um, show off to your favorite lens manufacturer in the hopes they might send you another free lens. <laughs> that is the end of my demonstration. Again, my name is Stuart Wood and you can find me at stuartwood.com. So I'm gonna come back now. Awesome, thank you, Stuart. Um, and um, answer some questions. We do. Um, Daniel Ju, do you have any editing tips for macro? Editing tips for macro? Um, oh man, I could go on all night for this one. <laughs> <clears throat> you got six I, minutes, mate. Yeah, I would just literally just find your own style. Once you find your own style, uh, stick to it no matter what people say. Because um, I started off with like a dark and moody style years ago and people didn't like it. Uh, I didn't get no likes on Facebook. And we're all chasing after those thumbs up on Facebook. And um, my style took off once I stopped caring about what other people think of the uh, the shots so yeah when it comes to editing just i would go out find uh, your top macro photographers other than me <laughs> okay um pick five of their their images that you like download them to your hard drive and then try and replicate that now don't post them on social media saying that you've done this just try and replicate it check out the lighting and all that how they've edited it and you can always contact that photographer as well, because in a lot of cases, they will reply back to you and tell you how they did it. Once you've replicated that method, then go out and start shooting your own macro. That's a, that's a good tip I can give you. Awesome. We have um, Mark Goldberg, does different water make a difference? Distilled, filtered, bottle, or tap? I've not found any difference, to be fair. Um, I used to mix my water with glycerin as well, and I found that wasn't quite as good. Not too sure why. I'll just use normal tap water in my water drops. It works perfectly great. So I've not really noticed any difference. 
you actually answer someone else's question about <laughs> <Did I? laughs> it's a common question i really should put it in my presentation just to be honest with you and then uh, <laughs> what about using your renox dcr 250 for get more for getting yeah. more magnification? Yeah. if if you need to get more magnification don't crop in in post get yourself a Rhinox or extension tube because it's, it's so much better. Because when you, post, when you crop in post, you're actually magnifying the noise and grain in the image as well and any imperfections. So yeah, the Rhinox is a very inexpensive, uh, it's basically a magnifying glass that clips onto the front of your lens. I've actually got one over here. And um, the Rhinox is probably one of the better ones out there, I'd say, because it's so much easier to use and there's no distortion. The, uh, the sharpness is great off it. So it is a good uh, option for getting that extra reach. Uh, Andrew says, any tips on capturing wild animals like butterflies or ladybugs as they often fly if you get too close? Yeah, um, go out in the morning or in the evening. I, I've, I've never gone out in the morning. I'm not a morning person. So I generally go out and then I walk around an area, notice where the butterfly is flying around and then come back towards the evening. When it gets colder, they, they, they just not bothered by you because they, they, they can't be bothered flying away uh, another thing i've noticed as well it's the type of clothes you wear as well and i'm not 100 percent sure what's going on something to do with the um it's, i think it's the ultraviolet but the insects see um i believe white they see uh, as no danger but black is literally like a black void so as soon as something black comes up against you it, they just shoot off which is why i would love to have a white camera <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, another thing I noticed as well with the probe lens, you can get closer to your subject with a probe lens. So it's something to do with the big lens on the front. But uh, generally, colder temperatures are probably the best thing you can do for capturing things, uh, insects that are skittish. Uh, Dornberg Media says, wants to store with hat giveaway. Uh, hat giveaway? Yeah. People want my hat, do they? <laughs> I don't currently um, give away hats at the moment, but maybe in the future. Sorry. Daniel is trolling me now, okay? Daniel is trolling me about Luminar. He knows <laughs> I don't like Luminar. <laughs> I was trying to make sense of the question. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it doesn't work on my computer, basically. So um, I'll revisit with Luminar when I get a new computer, hopefully next year. And okay. that is it for questions. Excellent. Perfect timing. And I'm on time as well. Oh, <laughs> that's you that's rock. a first. That is a first <laughs> for me, being on time. Uh -oh. Again, um, I do want to emphasize while I've got two minutes, because according to this, I have two minutes, yeah? You do. Take them. A lot of people do ask me about, you know, what lens should I buy when, when you want to go... When you start in macro photography, I always recommend a, a nifty 50 and macro tubes. You can then stick on the Rhinox or the Nissi filter to get closer. But when you want to go for your first dedicated macro lens, go for the lower. OK, because unfortunately, I discovered lower after I got my Canon lens. And with the B&H sales that are on at the moment, for the price of this one Canon lens, you can actually buy the, uh, the lower 100 millimeter two times macro and the 25 millimeter 2.5 to five times macro all for the same price of your canon yeah. lens not dishing on canon or anything but canon come on put your thumb out yeah <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> oh yeah um yeah. i did. highly recommend you just go for the lower straight away we did Insert, we had oh, i'm so sorry to interrupt you we had one person ask a question she has a um a 60 millimeter lawa and she mm -hmm. wanted to know if the 100 millimeter is that much better um and, and what's your opinion on that i've never used the 60 so i can't really comment on that um i'm not one of these people that will read the spec sheet and comment on something so I, honestly i can't comment on that um the only thing i could suggest is if she emails me a couple of her pictures to see what they're like and i could um go through it from there you know i mean it's a lower so it's already going to be good but uh, the you know, optics I, I... inside these lowers are just so fantastic it's unbelievable yeah um yeah and I think she would have a, a further standoff range, you know, for you know, with the hundred millimeter, of course. But I, I, to be honest, I, I'm going to suggest <clears throat> that 
unless you just want to take advantage of the of the special that's going on, mm-hmm. you'll get something that that doesn't 100% duplicate what you already have. You already have yeah. a 60, so maybe get that 25. I mean, have even more magnification. Is there anything your 60 is not doing that you need it to do? Is the question really? That's you know, I mean, question. if you want to get closer, you can bang on the um, you know Rhinox or go for their their ultra macro. You know, five times um, one because when you when you start getting to macro, you you, you want to get closer, 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 closer all the time. It's a struggle just to try and get closer and closer, <laughs> you know. And the yeah. uh, the closer you get, the more diffraction, the, the the less your depth of field gets. So you start going into, uh, you know, your specialist lenses. Yeah, very good. So wow. again, I would like to thank Laura for having me here and for being H, of course. Uh, was, Thank it's you. A great opportunity to present a uh, webinar for you guys. Yeah, Stuart, you did an amazing job. Um, hope we can uh, work together again soon. Uh, Team Lawa, thank you very much. You guys were awesome.